Third time's the charm. Let's, uh, let's do this. Okay, so real quick, a uh, brief overview of how the calculator works. Um, well, let me back up. All right, so you just finished doing your host file. You finished doing your settings. We're modifying your attributes file, and we need to find your field of view, right? So in this calculator, what I'm doing is taking your actual, um, like, projection and field of view from the lenses of each of your VR headsets using this uh, public information database of open VR stuff. Um, and I'm backwards calculating how it translates to star citizens field of view that they calculate on a diagonal plane across your aspect ratio. Um, I know it's a little complicated, but just leave in the calculator. Um, we can get to the nitty gritty later. So i am be testing the valve index real quick just to have like the most support um, for the time being. But basically what we're gonna be doing is having users find these values uh, and what works best for them and then just verifying them on the spreadsheet. So feel free to update it. Um, but basically the best, fastest, easy speed run way to do this is uh, open Steam VR. You'll go into your settings after you get all your VR stuff, stuff set up. Um, check what your 100% render resolution with super sampling enabled is, and then uh, we'll determine a few factors from here. So one, is it less than our dis desktop monitor display? All we're looking at is our width because uh, Star Citizen will lock UI elements to a 16 by nine plane, except for your inventory. Uh, but your, your ship calling terminals, uh, your Moby Glass, all that is on a 16 by nine based um, aspect ratio. So what we're checking is that your desktop monitor is greater than uh, our, our horizontal eye um, render resolution here. If it's not, you can use DSR and, and super scaling to scale up your desktop monitor that, or you can slide the slider to just be lower, you know, try 50% or whatever, whatever your resolutions end up being. Um, just try to get it to be, it, it, the vertical doesn't really matter as long as the horizontal is less than your actual desktop horizontal. It should work because star is in 60 by 90, etc. Um, I hope that's clear. Uh, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit um, real quick just for interpolation. If your headset supports multiple frame rates uh, or frequencies, I suggest running like closer to native is always usually better. So let's say you're getting over 80 frames in star citizen. I would set it to 80 hertz. Let's say you're getting 70, 70 to 80 frames in Star Citizen. Uh, if you have a 144 option, you can run that because you interpolate at 72 frame rate. Um, I'm running 120 at the moment, and that means if Star Citizen is getting around 60 frame rate, uh, I'd be interpolating at 60, uh, 62 with whatever the buffer, cache, and all that. You know, it gets a little extra frame rate in there, but. Um, so I'm probably going to be interpolating around 60, 60 hertz or 60 frames per second uh, with 120 hertz enabled. Um, I, it's probably not that clear, but it has to do with the way like half half refresh rates work and how it fills in frames and stuff when you're not generating enough frames for the headset. Um, being on a higher resolution with lots of interpolation can cause nausea or dizziness or whatever. Like that's that's where you get delay and and some wonkiness it, it just it'll affect you a little bit maybe perhaps so try to run like native if you can if you're getting 80 frames in game try to run 80 hertz if you're getting 90 frames in game try to run 90 hertz if not think of like fractions so 90 hertz display can run 60 as well as 30 uh, as well as a half rate so 45 so that means i could interplate at 30 frames a second 45 frames a second 60 frames a second or 90 frames a second uh, so 90 hertz is probably a really good setting, and that's why most headsets have 90 hertz options. Um, and then 120, 90, 60. Well, 90 actually won't work for 120. It'll be half and then everything below that. So it'll be 120, 60, 30, et cetera. And then 80 would be uh, 40, 20, et cetera. Um, and then 72, and then 36, and then whatever that is. So... Um, uh, hope that's a little clear on how interpolation works and how our uh, our resolution is found uh, for 100 percent in Steam VR. Did Steam VR just crash? No, it didn't. Okay. Um, so we're going to actually take these settings that Steam VR suggests, and we're going to put that straight into our attributes file. Oh, and of course, calculating our field of view. So 115 is what we're calculating for the index. 
So we'll just slap 115 in there. Even if you want the decimal points, go ahead and put them in. I think it supports like multiple decimal places. Uh, so 2016 for our height, uh, 2240 for our width, and then make sure you're on borderless, uh, so window mode two. And then there's a whole lot of settings. You can go in here and edit if you want. Um, we should be good to go. Uh, so we'll start Vorpex desktop. Once the desktop's done and you've done your EAC bypass, we'll go ahead and launch Star Citizen. And I think I'm actually running VSync. Try to disable VSync in your drivers if you can. I just swapped over. My 4090's having some memory issues and was causing blue screens. I gotta swap it out. But I'm on the 7900 XTX at the moment and I probably should have checked my drivers. I already had the uh, integrated graphics on, so AMD drivers should be up to date. Uh, I don't need that. We'll close toolkit. Um, so SteamVR is good. Vorpex desktop's good. We'll go and launch the game. And then Star Citizen should have Vorpex attached to it. So it should hook. And there we go. Attaching. And why did that relaunch? I don't know. I guess because Vorpex desktop like closed and reopened to attach. Whatever. I'll leave it open. Uh, so now that we're hooked, you can see the Vorpex desktop logo uh, at the bottom. You can get your, your messages, which you can hide in your settings. Oh, and real quick, I didn't cover it, but in your Vorpex configuration, um, make sure you enable expert uh, mode and then enable the G3D shader authoring, which is what like actually pushes the DLL into, like it injects a DLL file into Star Citizen. Um, and then here you can see we're running 16 by 9 on the UI, so it actually still fits in my frame because we're only 2016 pixels wide uh, instead of 2560. And then um, we'll go ahead and load in. Let me get my headset on and let me swap your view to... Oh, and speaking of this, when things are like up in the way, make sure you like minimize everything. You can hit like Windows D to minimize it all um, and then bring up your game. But make sure there's nothing in front because, like, you could be clicking on things here in the desktop viewer and not realize it. So make sure those are minimized. But let me go ahead and switch you over to my my view. So this is what uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you both eyes. I know it's going to be small when I'm looking at the, uh, the settings for Vorpex, but just go with it. I'll try to get closer to the screen or whatever. Uh, okay. Just a moment. Get my headset on. And my headset's black. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I probably should have checked my drivers. All right, whatever. I don't need the headset on. Oh, that frame rate's terrible, though. Yeah, probably should do a driver update. So let me just try to quickly explain, like, um, how this works. Essentially, your view is going to be um, super zoomed in. And then you can hit middle mouse to zoom out. And when you're... Uh, like trying to go through options, menu game options, whatever, or you're accessing a terminal or your Moby Glass, this zoomed out view is going to work and you can actually like use your head to like look down and then actually like reach some of your, your stuff at the bottom. Um, so these are actually not visible on my screen, but they're visible in Vorpex. So, so they're actually like reachable. I hope that makes sense. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's get into the pixel one to one. Go ahead and turn off your chat. So when when we're, when we're in the zoomed in view, um, ideally in your headset you shouldn't have these borders like at all. Uh, I actually don't see them in my headset, but Steam VR View does just slightly see them. But essentially you're going to go into. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to do boom, and make them closer. I actually zoom the headset in. Let me try that again. Back it up. Zoom it in back up bam I'll try to get this right here sorry I'm just like setting the headset on my desktop because it's actually not generating any image for some reason um, and the frame rate's terrible but basically what we're trying to do is in full VR mode um, we want to do a pixel one-to-one -one, and then you want to get this zoomed in enough that your field of view is actually comfortable 1.12 is a little zoomed out you can actually see that um, it's kind of hard to see, but if you look at like parallel lines that are at a diagonal 
and then you like turn your head, those diagonal lines shouldn't warp at all. They shouldn't bend. They shouldn't be rounded. They should stay pretty straight in your headset. This is only something you can view through your headset based on the hardware's field of view, like your actual lens, uh, you know, the convex, the con convection or concavish or whatever. Any, uh, anyway, yeah, so the hardware of your field of view, like you want to try to match the game to, to be like one-to-one -one with that. Um, when we're doing geometry rendering, like this is ideally like the best way that you can get uh, 3D experience is to run geometry. If you if you launch the game with geometry set already, your game will run smoother and not have any texture bugs. If you switch to it after being on the Z translations or the Z normal, Z adaptive already, you'll get bugs where like the right eye won't render certain textures, uh, which is apparent like on rocks and other surface materials. Uh, and sometimes even your like, um, like the touch pads, anything that's not animated in the game, like uh, texture wise, like, like, um, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but you'll see obvious like issues. So that's where you want to relaunch your game and use geometry from the start. Now, notice uh, you can do Alt F for your frame rate. Uh, maybe I have to close this first. Alt F for your frame rate. Yeah, so there's your frame rate. I can't quite make that out from here in my view. Uh, maybe you can, but I don't know. Um, what we can do is switch to Z Adaptive to actually increase our frame rate. Let me get that switched, bam. And it should be running a lot smoother. Um, now in these 3D settings, what we suggest, or I think what Vorpex's configuration file suggests is for VR experience, you set this to 0 0.00. The default's like 0 0.03. Um, you can use 0 0.01 through whatever. Um, What's that, what that effect is going to do is kind of dwarf your character and make the world feel bigger. So if you want in a very obvious 3D effect, uh, go ahead and just use the defaults. Your character will just feel small and then the world will feel big. And you can actually shift like what feels small and big with, the, uh, with this depth. Um, what's it called? Depth. Depth weighting near and far. And that basically is, it's creating, like there's a cross plane where things up close on the left eye will be shifted to the right and things on the right eye will be shifted to the left it makes things feel closer you'll have geometry still exist there but it like makes the textures like shift on the z-plane so that it like um, like gives us a 3d effect cheaply it's just doing a, a matrix and then changing the z values um, which is like easier to run on your gpu but if you set that depth weighting to like really, really close, then like the depth of like your character body and stuff will look like really close. And then like the effect of things far away won't be as drastic. And then if you set it to a far away field of view, like everything close won't be super drastically close, but everything far away will be like drastically far. I hope that makes sense. The defaults are 0.5 and point, uh, 0 0.03. Um, but yeah, so trifocal distance of zero, that's what Vorpex configuration and manual said to do for VR. And I do find that to be like the best for like field of view and actual like realistic 3D rendering. Um, the world feels realistic. Your character doesn't feel super tall, doesn't feel super 3D, but you feel like you're a part of the world. Um, and then of course you can adjust the focal from there and, and play with what you like. Um, now, I didn't really cover the zoom much. I don't want to really change the zoom, but like 1.12 is kind of zoomed out. Basically, what you're checking for is that when you turn your head quickly that you're not like getting the border at all um, when you're in the zoomed in field. And then when you're zoomed out, like, of course, you'll see the border and then it'll stay in place. But when it follows your head with track IR, when you're in the zoomed in view, you don't want to see any like clipping on the sides. Of course, my game's running like garbage frame rate at the moment, but um, that's actually a good test because uh, the lower your frame rate gets, the less track IR can update in game, or the last the the longer it takes for track IR to, to show the effect in game, right? Um, but you can also adjust the zoom by zooming in even further um, and even bumping up your field of view higher um, and zooming even further. You can get rid of those borders completely. Um, and still have correct field of view and 3D rendering. 
Um, I'm going to leave it at 1.12, but I find like 1.17 to be pretty much like perfect field of view. Um, but it's a it's a hair on the zoomed in side if you're trying to do like FPS combat or whatever. So I like to have a little bit of that Quake Pro feel. Um, so I, I used a little bit zoomed out, and I find that it works really well. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. I hope that video like helps to explain a lot of things. Um, here I'll give you like a, an example of like what one eye view would look like, right? So here is the left eye, and you can see that there's actually like uh, there's a little bit of the peak preview when I'm looking to the left, but that's of course running at 20 frames, right? Normally your game will run like 50, 60, 70. You can normally handle this, but I think my graphics drivers crashed, or I I didn't even really configure them, but. Just trying to get the video out. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and if you got any other questions, just message me on the Discord or whatever. Message anybody else that's uh, gone through the setup before. And um, I really hope this video just helps you to get like a quick setup with accurate field of view and realistic 3D rendering. And then we can all discuss and tweak settings from there and find out what works best for us all and come to a conclusion like what an optimal setup might be, right? Um, hope you all enjoyed, and uh, thanks for helping grow the Star Citizen VR community. And big shout out to Chachi, I guess. Um, he's been pretty instrumental, and it's thanks to him that I even got Vorpex in the first place uh, back before EAC bans even ha or the EAC uh, lockdown even happened. Uh, so thanks, thanks all of y'all.